Welcome everyone. My name is Carla Plasencia and I'm super happy to have you here um, today with us. Now I will introduce you to our presenter for today. She is Sue. She is um, from the Academy of Art University in San Francisco. Uh, thank you so much, Sue, and the stage is all yours. Thank you, Carla. Hi, everybody. It's, welcome. It's so good to have you here. Um, you know, I know that there are schools all over the world that you could be interested in, and we're glad we're one of them. Um, I think we might be a good fit if you're someone who needs to work when you graduate, because that's really what makes us different from other art schools. Uh, we focus on students getting jobs, getting good jobs. We don't believe in that phrase, starving artists. We believe in thriving artists. So having said that, I'll show you a little bit about uh, where we're located. This is San Francisco. That's the Golden Gate Bridge. If any of you have ever been to San Francisco, it's a beautiful city, a wonderful place to study the visual arts. Yes, we do have hills and cable cars, and that's the bay that you see right there. So again, it's a wonderful, beautiful city to study the visual arts. Uh, the Academy of Art is also at a hub of Silicon Valley, and you've probably heard of Silicon Valley, but also we have not only computer companies, but we have art and design studios all over the Bay Area. This is just kind of a little map to show you just how many there are. The good thing about this for you is that you're going to be in a situation where you'll be around people who are doing the kind of work that you want to do. In fact, that's part of what makes us so special. We actually have our faculty who are working and teaching at the same time. And so it's almost like, you could think of it like this, every class is a job interview. We also have accreditation. Now, you may say, well, what is accreditation and why do I care? Accreditation means that we've been a evaluated by our peers, by groups on the regional level and on the national level, and they've all said that we're doing a good job. So this just shows you some. WASC is our regional accreditation. NASAD is National Association of Schools of Art and Design. That's very important. Uh, we have CETA. We have NAB. Uh, NAB is the National Architecture People, and CETA is Interior Architecture and Design. And we also have the California Commission on Teaching Credential. So almost anything you want to do, we've, had a, we've been checked out. And I think you can rest assured that we're doing what we're supposed to do. Now, to the actual classes. You can see we have 22 schools. And we combine schools. And what that means is, um, say, for example, you're in motion picture and you'd like to Take some acting classes, we can make that happen. Or maybe you're in graphic design, but you'd like to take some UI UX classes, we can make that happen. So what I'm trying to say is, we can actually tailor make your degree. So you really end up with a portfolio that shows that you can do the work that you wanna do. We also have STEM degree programs. And if you don't know what STEM is, it's an acronym. It stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Why are our classes STEM uh, approved? They're approved because we have so much computer uh, work in the actual art and design that the government has decided to allow our international students to work for three years after they graduate. You don't have to get a special visa, an H1, or any of those things. You can simply continue on with your student visa and work for three years. Now, these are some of our more popular areas. And I, this is student work. I thought you might like to see it. We'll go through it pretty quickly here. Uh, fashion design. We do not just the actual design, but we do the textiles. We do the knitwear. Uh, basically, everything that you see in our fashion design program, our students have created. We also have jewelry and metal arts. Some schools have that as part of the fashion design department, but actually, we think it's pretty good to have it standalone. So 
whether you want to work on maybe gates to a home or an estate, or you want to do jewelry because you have a special, like this woman, I'm sure she loves birds. So um, we can make that happen for you. Photography. We all have our cameras on our phones and, and we love the pictures that we take and we send them to everybody. But in our photography department, what we're doing is we're taking these images, not just images, but images that are memorable. And I think they're pretty beautiful, actually. Um, you can see this is probably sugar and there's different ways of catching that sugar in midair. Um, that's the kind of work you'll do if you come to the Academy of Art. This was done by actually an international student in advertising. And I think this student really wanted to, uh, she was interested in the ecology and the oceans and she wanted to make a point about plastics. You can do that kind of thing. The idea with advertising is to get people's attention and to make them remember uh, something that's important to you. Games. A lot of people are playing games and we create games, we work on games, we collaborate with gaming companies. So if you like games or you have an idea for your own game or that's just the world you wanna live in, we're, this is the place. We have animation and this is the uh, 2D, more traditional animation. This is where you actually take characters and you make them real. Uh, for example, in this visual development slide, you can see that this, these people have real personalities. They have their own dress. Um, they probably even have their own stories. We also, in the, in the visual development area, we create environments. We create whole characters and not just the way they're dressed. So um, Again, this can be part, if you want to do this kind of work and you want to be also in games, we could, we could combine that for you. We could, we could give you a portfolio that would re reflect what you're interested in. We also have the 3D animation and visual effects. This is the more polished end of animation. This is where you're going to see the films. You might go to the movie theater and see a Pixar film. This is what... Uh, they're using, the, the technology is the same that we use, that they use. And some people think, well, I could just learn the computer and then I don't need to worry about art and design. No, that's not really true. So you do need to know how to draw. You, need, you do need to do storyboards. You do need to have some background information in terms of how you're going to create those characters and what, how the story is going to be shown before you actually get on the computer. Industrial design is also very popular. It's one of those areas where, you know, it's actually creating worlds for people. Um, maybe you think, gosh, I, I'd love to create a bus that was really fun and comfortable. And, or maybe it's a shoe, or maybe it's a train, I don't know. But industrial designers are always looking at the, their environment and thinking about what would work better. Maybe you'd like to work on a car. And here we have uh, the director of the industrial design department is Tom Matano. Tom worked for Miata. And he's worked for other companies too. But the reason I like to bring up Miata is because he, he created, actually, he was the lead designer on the Miata two-seater. That's become a, a car that people feel like is a beautiful car. It uh, set a whole new level of design and Tom is respected around the world. So for example, if you decide you wanna be in industrial design and yes, you wanna do car design, Tom could hook you up with some of the best designers, the best companies. Uh, he can open doors from you, for you that you really couldn't do by yourself. Graphic design, another very popular major. And what is graphic design? Well, graphic design is taking a very small space and making some, a product attractive. In this case, we've got jelly, jam, whatever you might like to call it. So the designer decided on the color of the label, on the, on the images and the on the font. Maybe you wanna do a logo. Maybe, I don't know, something that, catches people's attention, brands a certain 
uh, product. Um, and, and it's something that people may use for a very long time. So graphic designers are very careful about everything they do because space counts for them. Illustration, illustration, we have children's books, we have editorial, um, and we also have comic books. Um, people need to want to sell their stories and, and it's uh, the illustrators that create the images um, for the comic books. We all know about fine art painting. Fine art painting is what we go to galleries to see, beautiful work. These are not photos. The, again, this is student work and these are all images that students have painted. Sculpture as well. It can be traditional sculpture or it can be more stylized work like this is. Uh, whatever you're interested in, our students sometimes participate in San Francisco community uh, events. Uh, some of their images, sculptures, are actually at our zoo in San Francisco. Interior architecture and design. We're taking uh, interiors and making them appealing. So people want to be in them. They want to stay in them. They're comfortable. And I love this image because this is just a stairway, right? Could be going up to another room. But they've taken the stairway and made it a beautiful space so that the space uh, is not only uh, practical, but it's also beautiful. So all this work I've been showing you is to um, kind of get the point across that we are professional. We're a professional art and design work uh, school, and we want to connect you with the best in the industry. So every year we have what's called our spring show. We invite industry representatives to come and recruit our students. Many times they're hired right on the spot, as you can see. Uh, they're looking at the student work. Um, and it's a wonderful experience because not only um, do you get to show off your best work, but also you get to be uh, in front of people that can hire you. And maybe that dream job will happen before you actually graduate. Everybody always asks me about rankings. How is the school ranked? Many times colleges, um, well, you know what? Well, we have a, a million volumes in our library or all our professors are PhDs. That's not really important at the Academy of Art. What's important at the Academy of Art is that when we compete with other artists and designers from all over the world, um, we show well um, that our work is respected and appreciated. And so I just wanted to show you, these are some recent awards that we received. We enter global contests and we usually do very, very well. So this just gives you some sense of uh, the fact that on a, on a worldwide scale, uh, our students are um, top, of the, top of the line. We also have partnerships with companies that I'm sure you're aware of. There's uh, Electronic Arts, there's LinkedIn, there's Jeep, there's Samsung, Jaguar. Um, many, many of these companies come to us while students are still in school uh, students find themselves collaborating, uh, creating products of the future. And uh, whether it's fashion or whether it's industrial design, interiors, they come to us because we, they know our students are uh, conscientious, they're really uh, skilled, and they're creative. So what does this mean for you? Well, it also means that when you get out, guess what? You already have a track record with companies in the United States and around the world. Um, what a great way to start your career. You've already worked for a company. They know your work and they want you. Uh, whether it's working at Tesla, IBM, Marvel Comics, all of these companies and more are hiring our students. And why? Do they hire because they know that our faculty are people who have been successful and are successful in the industry? That first person there is Tom Matano. He's the, 
the guy I was telling you about that did the Miata. Uh, Catherine Tate's won um, awards for her work on Star Wars and other, other films. Jana Memel down here, motion picture. She's got three Academy Awards. Anyway, they're all uh, highly regarded. And when you work with them, um, not only do you start your networking experience, but you also get a lot of help getting that first job. Now, as an international student, when you come, English is probably not your first language. So we provide you with a lot of support, writing support, language support, uh, even understanding the culture of our classrooms. And you, you are, uh, have that available to you the entire time you're at the academy. Also, we have clubs um, because guess what? The people in your classes are actually the people that you're going to be working with in the future. So you need to get connected. And what better way uh, than doing fun things like, for example, the Fine Arts Club or the Jewelry and Metal Arts Club, uh, Beyond the Front Row, which is a fashion club, or the Anime Club, if you're into anime. So we have a lot of clubs, and it's a great way to meet your fellow students. And also, we have housing. Um, I know some of you may say, well, I, I don't really want to live in, in campus housing. We have great housing, by the way. As you can see, these, these images aren't the typical campus housing. Um, and that bus that you see on one of the slides is actually a shuttle bus that will take the students back and forth from their class to their home. What better way to get to know a city? Um, and we have a lot of different kinds of housing. We've got, we've got private rooms, we've got shared rooms, we have meal plans. The point is, when you come to the academy, we want you to be able to start out not worrying about where am I going to live, how am I going to get to school. We don't want you to have to think about how do I turn on my electricity or do I have heat. Uh, we'll take care of all of those details. We just want you to come go to your classes and start to learn. I mean, that's why you go to the academy, that's why you come to any college, um, is to learn. And we wanna make that as easy as possible for you. The other thing that's really great about it is, again, you're gonna meet students just like you, who have this dream, who have this passion about art and design. And you're gonna to get to know them, you're gonna share uh, good times and hard times, you're gonna, you're going to become buddies. And, um, and that's, again, the importance of networking and getting to know your fellow classmates is going to mean a whole lot moving forward. So this is, we like to say, defy the ordinary, create the extraordinary. Um, I love that phrase. It's kind of catchy. Um, and we think if you come to the Academy of Art, you're going to, to find your new home. And I'm going to ask Carla if she, before we move on to the next few slides, I'd like to kind of show you a, a reel we have of some of the student work um, and just give you kind of the whole, the whole idea in one short uh, video. So Carla, could you play that for me now, please?
So that just shows you kind of everything I've, I've been telling you about. Um, I want to just say that um, that's all student work and, um, and we're pretty proud of every year it just gets better and better. The school's been around since 1929 and um, I hear all the time from alumni that it's one of the best experiences they ever had and they really don't know where they'd be if it hadn't been for the Academy of Art. Um, I also, this always comes up, what is the cost? And I just want to remind you that all schools have a cost, but when you think about what you get, the value of the Academy of Art is priceless, basically. Um, if you attend the Academy uh, and you, you want to just, for your tuition, say you want to live somewhere else or you're, you're, uh, you're going to be living with family, I don't know what your situation might be, um, it would cost you approximately $33,000 a year. That's two semesters, and that's all your activity fees, your health insurance, and all of that. Graduates a little bit more, not much. But what you're going to end up with, and, and this is the most important part, is that competitive portfolio. And you're going to connect with people in the industry, top-rated top professionals, that are going to be able to open doors for you probably for the rest of your life. So when you think about spending your time, spending your money, you want to go some, to a school, I hope you choose the Academy of Art, where you can really feel like you're getting what you paid for, um, where you can feel like you're making the connections you need to make to move forward in your life, and where you feel you get the support you need as an artist or designer. You know, many times students tell me that their parents say, well, maybe you, maybe you shouldn't do this right now. Maybe you should just go to a more traditional school. You can always come back to this later. Um, but we don't, we don't believe that that's best for everyone. We think sometimes art and design um, students, they just have a special spark that ignites their, uh, their spirit. And we want you to we want you to develop that. We want you to um, we want you to thrive. We want you to look forward every day to going to work because you're doing what you love. And I know if you do that, uh, you'll make the world a better place in the process. So this is some of the uh, how to apply. Um, the, I'm sure you can ask the question in the chat as well if you want to know uh, more about who can I get in touch with. Um, sometimes Catherine Tate joins me. She's the uh, executive director of animation. And I know animation is very popular, um, and especially animation for film, animation for games. And she also has a, a video that I'm going to ask Carla to play. Um, this is just about uh, the things that you would be doing if you were working in animation and visual effects. So Carla, can you play that one as well, please?
So there you go. Um, that's that's uh, the Academy of Art University in a nutshell. There's a lot more that I could go into. Probably could talk to you for hours, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you now. Uh, Carla, you want to help me uh, answer questions and anything else that you think uh, will be beneficial for the students? Of course. Thank you so much, Sue, for sharing all that. Um, here I see a question. Guys, remember that you can also uh, ask in Portuguese if you, if you you don't feel that confident in English, and that will be okay as well. Perfect. So um, does the university offer summer programs? We do. So um, if you are not at college age level, but if you want to just try out the Academy of Art University, we have what we call our art experience. We have, um, uh, it's, it's free. You just take a, a classes. Um, you don't get the full kind of credit that you would get if you were taking regular college classes. But it does give you an experience of what to expect when you're in the classes. And guess what? Um, if you take a class and you pass it, it's just pass fail, uh, you get $1,000 towards another class you might take if you decide you want to continue at the Academy of Art. Um, we also have summer school. Uh, our, our classes go year round. We have the fall semester, we have the spring semester, and we have the summer semester. So if you want to take some classes in the summer, um, you can do that. And uh, they're shorter, but more accelerated, but they're shorter. So uh, seven and a half weeks and you can get a full college credit. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Um, here I have another question about, uh, okay. Um, does the student visa um, allows them to work while studying? So yes, there's, there's this is a complicated question, but I'll try to make it as simple as possible. So your F-1 visa allows you to do certain things. You can work on campus. And after you've been at the school for a year, you can start working part-time. We call it, it's, a, it's concurrent practical training. Or when you've graduated, you can work. And, and remember, I talked about those STEM programs. Um, you can work for three years after uh, completing your degree without getting any special um, visa. We also have internships because if, if you remember back in the beginning, I said there's all these companies that are around the Academy of Art where you can do internships. Um, we, we get internship requests all the time. So you can do intern internships for credit. You can do uh, on-campus work and you can also work uh, for part-time after you've been at the school for a year, as long as the subject matter is related to your field. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, here I have another question that says if there is a maximum age to apply. A maximum or minimum? Maximum. <laughs> no, you can be any age and apply. Even we've had people that are, are uh, uh, I think the oldest I've ever met was someone 80. But if you are... Um, 17, 18, you can apply to the school. Um, and we can, like I said, we can start you out with your with the art experience and then you can go on into uh, taking your college classes once you have uh, graduated. Awesome, thank you very much. Uh, here, Marianne is asking if the university offers a scholarship for international students. We don't have a specific Uh, scholarship for international students, but we do have scholarships that we offer our students uh, every, every semester. It's different. So what you should do is if you're interested in coming to the academy, you should contact uh, our international admissions department and someone, maybe even Lucy, who's answering questions right now, and she can tell you what will be available uh, the semester that you want to come. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, here, another question is, how do I start? How do you start? 
Well, you have to have a dream. I hope you all that are, you, you've probably got some idea. I bet if I was to sit down and talk to each one of you, uh, you would have some kind of idea about what you think you'd like to do. And then you just contact us. You tell us what you're interested in. And you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you've done in the past. And we have a team of specialists that will work with you, get you in the right classes uh, at the right time. And after that, you're, you will, it'll one step and then the next and then the next. It's all laid out perfectly for you. And you have advisors the entire time you're at the university. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sue. Um, here I have another question. How are the class sizes? Or how many students are on each class? Okay. That's a good question. You know, um, some schools have very, very large classes. They hold them in um, uh, big lecture halls. That's, that's not how we do it at the academy. We try to keep our class size small. So for example, some of your uh, general education classes may have 15, 18 students in them. Um, in, in the art and design classes, you will probably see uh, in a lot of the classes, it's fewer than that. Um, we, we really want you to get the individual attention that you need. And we know that a, a lot of times you learn by watching. You also get these things called critiques where uh, the instructor comes and looks at your work and then says, well, this is good. And you could improve by doing this. And then you, that's how you learn. That's, that's the way um, your work becomes professional. The, the thing that I think is also most important is we offer workshops. So if a student, for example, is in a class and uh, they feel like they just need a little extra help, we provide that. Uh, you can go to a workshop uh, and that's taught by an instructor, not another student. And the instructor will look at where you're having problems and try to help you fix it. So we have a lot of support from you, for you, not just in the classroom, but also outside of class. And if you're not in San Francisco, um, we, we will still have Zoom workshops. Um, we will find ways to work with you. Our online classes are excellent. Um, I can just tell you a little story about this. Um, in 2000, we realized that um, the academy needed to do something online because we had so many students from all over the United States and all over the world actually, who wanted to take our, our courses. So we built our own online system and that system is, it's world-class. Uh, I'm very, very proud of it. We, um, all the classes, the content has been developed by our instructors. We use um, demo demonstrations. You always have the best seat in the house um, you will learn the same content that you would learn if you were in San Francisco. And, um, and you're going to end up again with that great portfolio. We had a student who uh, was in, Carl has heard this story. He, she, he was in uh, uh, Pakistan and he was fashion de design student. Um, he could not come to the academy because he couldn't get a visa. So he um, did all his work online. He did excellent work, excellent work. So the director of the department said, I want to show your work at our uh, fall fashion show in New York City. And he was, of course, the student was thrilled. And then um, the student tried to get a visa, so a tourist visa even, so he could come and see his work on the runway in New York City, and he couldn't get the visa. So he watched it online. Um, and you know, he got a job right away. Um, but he couldn't, he couldn't actually do the work, nor could he see his work be shown. The reason I tell the story is, is because the world is, a uh, it's all global now. It's all, it's a big world. And we 
artists are wanted. Uh, good artists, good designers are wanted by everyone because we all love the visuals. And um, if, you, if you get involved with the Academy, whether it's online or on site, you're going to develop um, that eye, that all important eye, that taste level. You're going to develop the skills so that you can work wherever you want. Catherine Tate, who often is with me when I do these uh, in the animation and visual defect, effects department, she has started something that they're doing in all the big studios, which mm -hmm. is called the R Lab. And at the R Lab, you can access, if you just have a Chromebook, or if you just have uh, a screen monitor, a decent Wi-Fi, um, you can access our servers on campus and do the same work that other students are doing. And the great part about that is you don't have to move and you don't have to get up in the middle of the night. You can work when it works best for you. Uh, so we're doing everything we can to open the doors to everyone all over the world. Awesome, thank you for sharing, Sue. Um, I have here um, someone, Ana Paula, asking about um, the music programs. Mm. Can you share a little bit of that? You know, I love our music program. Um, we have, um, actually the, the director of the department, he's pretty great, he, he's a, he plays a saxophone and he actually, he goes to jazz clubs and plays, plays a saxophone. But anyway, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> um, the music department is really for uh, uh, people who want to do music. Maybe you've practiced, um, worked individually on an instrument, but this is more about creating compositions for uh, uh, movies, uh, sound effects for games, um, doing uh, sound, music for special events. Um, for example, that, that video I just showed you, both those videos had music in the background. Somebody had to compose that. So what we do is we take your love of music and then we uh, take that and we have you uh, creating compositions for, like I said, especially mu music. We have a motion picture department. You can work with that department. Game design, we have sound effects for that. Um, we have opportunities for you to work right within the university and start to put your compositions out. Who knows, you may, some of our films have actually received a, a, a special acknowledgement from the Academy people in, in Hollywood, and it could be your music playing in the background. So um, collaboration is also very, very important at the Academy of Art. And other thing that we do in animation uh, is we have this thing called Studio X, and that's where People come from all different areas and they collaborate to create a film. You could be part of that. It could be your music that is being used uh, with the Studio X projects. So if you want to work in music and you want to you wanna create your own sound and, and, and your own compositions and you want to use your love of music uh, to, to be part of your career, then we have something for you as well. Awesome, thank you very much. And I also have here someone asking, um, Joao is asking about the movies area. Do you have something for that? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the one slide I showed you, Jana Memel is on that slide and she actually has received three Oscars. Three, not just one, three. Uh, she brought them in and showed them to everybody one day. So that that's amazing. pretty exciting. Um, so again, we have acting, we have screenwriting, we have editing, um, we have directing, we have producing, we have a whole bunch of different uh, kinds of career tracks you can do in motion picture. Um, and Jana, having this reputation in Hollywood is certainly looking, always looking for talent. She, she's amazing. She, she uh, watches the directing that's going on. She 
she makes suggestions, she watches the actors, she's got that, again, that professional eye, fine tuning everything, not, not, not replacing your idea, but fine tuning everything so that the best possible uh, picture comes out. And um, we've had several, actually several who have, uh, have gotten the nod from the people at the uh, Academy of Sciences in Hollywood. That the is so awesome. <laughs> that is so yeah. awesome. Thank you so much, Sue. Uh, I have here someone asking, is the accommodation far from school? Well, that's a good question. And the fact of the matter is the accommodations are centrally located in San Francisco. Um, but our buildings are also kind of spread out. Um, and that's why we have the shuttle service. So if I'm living, like in that picture you saw with that white bus down at the bottom, if I'm living in that dorm, I just get on the bus, tell the bus driver where I want to go. I end up at my uh, classroom building. I can stay there as long as I want, or I can get on the bus, go back to uh, my home. Um, I can go there. I could go home for lunch, come back to the classroom for later in the afternoon. So we... We want, I'll tell you how that happened. We, we were, here we are in San Francisco, and of course there's a, a, a city bus system in San Francisco, but students had projects they were trying to carry, you know, and sometimes there wasn't room on the bus for a big project, or they'd get, you know, they'd have a painting, wouldn't quite be dry, or, or whatever it was. So we decided we need to have our own uh, shuttle bus system, and that makes it so much easier for students, because they, don't have to figure out how long is it going to, they know exactly when the bus is going to get them to uh, their classroom. They don't have to pay more money. They just show their ID and they have their own private shuttle service. That is amazing. That is so, so cool. It's kind of like the Disney buses. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, um, yeah, so we, we try, and we have a, um, I mean, besides our dorms, besides the shuttle service, we also have a meal plan. Uh, we have cafeterias, so some students want to cook, and we have uh, uh, rooms that have kitchens. But if you don't want to cook, if you just want to have somebody cook for you, if you want to eat in your room or um, eat in the cafeteria, you can do all that. And um, we try to keep it simple. We try to make it so really your work when you come to the academy is, is taking these classes and learning these skills that I've been talking about um, so that you can be a, a successful professional and that we try to make it as simple as possible. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, here I have another question that says, what English tests do you accept? Well, we accept almost all of them. Uh, we TOEFL, we ELTS, uh, we even accept the, the Duolingo uh, exam. And if you, If you don't want to take the exam until you arrive, we can give you a test at the school as well. Um, so uh, we're mostly interested in your uh, speaking, listening, understanding. And um, I, I think that a lot of you here today are probably would not need to take any special uh, English class. Um, but if you did, we have we have classes that will support you as well. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, here is another question. How do you describe a good candidate for the school? Hmm. Well, I've been at the school a long time and um, it was uh, many years ago, actually, the president of the school who is the granddaughter of the man who started the school, he was a painter Um, so it's been, you know, this mission of getting jobs and having successful students with competitive careers has really been a, passed down from generation to generation. Anyway, President Stevens said uh, to me, if I could find out what makes a successful student, that would be really important because then we could look for that student, right? And um, So I spent probably a year looking at records, talking to students, trying to figure out what 
what is the recipe for success? What I found out was, um, and it's not something you can just point at somebody and say, you're the one. Um, it was, a lot of it was A, attitude. Um, and by that, I mean, is the person persistent? Um, if they have a bad day, do they just give up and, um, and say, oh, I, I, it's not worth it, or I don't want to do this anymore? Are they, are they really committed to the process, knowing they will have good days and bad days? Are they, so are they committed? Second of all, are they focused? We have all of those art classes that I've talked to you about, so many art classes, so many combinations. And sometimes students can take a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, they get kind of lost in all of it and they, they end up still not knowing what they wanna do. So we want, them to, we want them to try things out, but we want them to then focus on something that they, that they really, it's, it's their passion. You know, that's what I want. It's what, and, uh, and then to go for it, give it 110%. And I guess the third thing is we want to make sure that you understand when you do come um, that this is about collaboration. Uh, it isn't about doing everything by yourself. In the past, a lot of young artists, young designers think, well, I, you know, I have to I'm going to work in this little dark room and it's all, it's all me and I'm going to come up with this great design. That's not how it works. You're going to work with a team. Uh, you're going to get to know people. You, you're going to, uh, sometimes your idea will be what the team works on. Other times their idea will be what the team works on. So we're going to teach you how to play well with others, I always say. We're going to teach you how to work with other artists and designers that are just as passionate as you are um, so that when you get into the real world and when you get into the job, um, you, know, you know what to do. You know how to act. You know how to be with others. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that is super important. And those are great tips. And I'm sure the students now feel super inspired by it. <laughs> um <laughs> Now, I know Paula is saying, looks uh, a wonderful place to learn. Thank you for the information. I would like to know if there is a difference in the cost of the in-person and online courses and how long are the, are the programs? So um, in terms of the courses that are online and on-site, they have the same learning outcomes. Uh, by that, I mean, at the end of the class, you will have uh, satisfied all the objectives, learning objectives, that whether you were on site or online, that you were supposed to learn. So it doesn't matter um, which one you go into, you're going to have the same learning objectives, same learning outcomes. Um, the classes online have been written by the same people who are teaching on site. So you have the same instructors. Um, you're going to have the opportunity to meet. If you're online, you have the opportunity to meet with the uh, instructors just like you would in person. In fact, sometimes I, I think the online actually have more opportunity to meet with the instructors because um, instructors have office hours. So uh, if a student, say if Carla was my instructor and I, I wanted to talk to Carla about something that was said in class or that I didn't understand, I could sign up for her office hours. So in terms of the difference between on-site and online, um, gosh, I, I think they're equal. I mean, you can say everybody knows the pluses of being on-site, but online also you can take them at the time that works for you. Um, you don't have to uh, try to set up a schedule around uh, the schedule of your classes uh, because it's you take the classes at the time that's best for you. They're weekly modules, um, so you have a week to do the work. And you can, if you know, some people like to do the work in the middle of the night. I'm not, I'm not that person, but there are people that like to do that. Some people like to do their work when they get up in the morning at five o'clock and they want to have a cup of coffee and they want to start doing their work. I'm not that person either. I'm kind of middle <laughs> of the road, but, but, you know, um, 
the online has a lot more flexibility than the on-site. But on-site, the, the pros of that are you get to mingle with other students in the classroom. Um, you have uh, maybe other students bring up topics that you hadn't thought about before. And it's just a whole, it's a whole different thing. So, yeah. but the class is the same. That's the, it's the atmosphere. It's whatever what you work best in, whatever your schedule allows, whatever your finances allow, it's going to help uh, dictate which way you go on that. And what was the other part of the question, Carla? Uh, if the cost is the same and yes. e how long are the programs? So we have uh, different levels of degrees. We have our associate degree, which is uh, about 66 units. And then we have our, our bachelor's degree, which is 132 units. That's semester units. Um, we will uh, look at test scores as well. If you have taken the IB exam, you have the HL, we will, uh, uh, anybody who's gotten a five or higher, we will accept credits uh, for specific classes in the general education part. So how long does it take you to get through the program? That's usually what people really want to know. Is it like how many years? I can't really... I wish I had an answer for that. Some people fly through the program. I don't know. They don't need as much time. And um, they take five or six classes a semester, and they do just fine, and everything's good. Others need more time. Um, I, I know people that say it's hard for them even to do four classes because um, they want to get it just right, or they want to spend more time on their homework, or they're trying you know, to create a portfolio and they just don't want to go fast. They want to really take their time getting through it. So it could take you four to five years or it could take you three and a half to four years, depending on the mm -hmm. speed at which you go through the curriculum. So they can, they can choose like, oh, I want to take four this semester and then, oh, I feel a little bit more confident, maybe six and then, oh, no, that was a lot. Let's go back to four. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You that can, awesome. we, we, start, we start you out at four because that, that we consider that to be full time. We know you don't know how much time it's going to take you to do your homework. You know, you have homework. Mm -hmm. You've got you to yeah. create these projects. And, um, you know, the people who, from my experience, usually the people who spend the most focused time on their projects are the ones that do best in the long run. But I have known people very successful who've flown through the program uh, and, and done just fine as well. So it's really up to the individual. Yeah, and at the end, your creative process is something that is on your own pace because mm -hmm. you cannot force it because otherwise it's, it doesn't come out right. So that's right. That, yeah, that's that is, absolutely that is awesome. That is awesome. Um, the next question that I have here is from someone who is still on high school. Mm -hmm. Is there any programs for people in high school? Yes, that's what uh, if you are a junior or senior level in high school, um, I guess I don't know if in, Port, in uh, Brazil, if you call it upper secondary, but if you're in that the last couple of years of high school, we have our art experience and the art experience is free. Uh, you would contact the school, tell them um, I'm interested in, I'll just say uh, game design. And I would like to try out the art experience and they'll sign you up and you can, and there's, they're free. Um, so it's a wonderful way to, for you to experience, maybe you, you think, well, I, I don't know if I want to do game design, but then sometimes I think I want to do, uh, illustration. And then sometimes I, I, and then I think I love music and then I really love acting. You could try all four <laughs> of them, you know, you could, you could take a couple classes, uh, one semester, a couple different classes the next semester you could could really try out the different majors and see which one you like the most awesome this is this is a great opportunity and um do, do the programs have any 
maximum age or can anyone who's interested in in studying it can do it the 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 uh we call the the art experience is for mm -hmm. high school students okay perfect awesome Thank you very much. And I think uh, we are reaching the end of the live session. Oh my God, it went by so fast. I don't know if you have any last tip or message that you would like to share with the students. Well, I just want to reiterate something I said earlier. Um, all of us who are in this work and, and in this field have heard the whole thing about the starving artists. And... Um, We don't believe that. We don't believe that's true. It, it shouldn't be true. Um, I used to do an orientation speech with, where I would talk about a famous uh, art sculptor, painter, Michelangelo, that probably all of you are, know who he is. If you don't, you should look him up. Um, you know, he started out, uh, he, he just had this thing about he wanted to do sculpture. And his father said, You might as well be a shoemaker. You'll never, you know, never have a career being a sculptor. And look what happened. He not only became a sculptor, but a painter. And guess what? He didn't die poor. He was a very wealthy man when he died. And um, we have, I could tell you story after story. Steve Jobs was somebody who, you know, he started a, a Macintosh computer, Apple. And um, he went to school. Um, first semester, he didn't like it. He spent most of his time in the cafeteria. He was totally engaged with the posters. He was, he just was fascinated with the type on those posters, the fonts. And he later on created the computers we all work on. And guess how, that's why we have all those fonts because yeah. Steve Jobs fell in love with type sitting in the cafeteria. Uh, and I wouldn't say he was uh, uh, a poor man when he died either. Um, so, you know, Walt Disney said, uh, if you can dream it, you can do it. And um, so what I would say to all of you, all of you that are here with me today, I know I've given you a tremendous amount of information. If you could dream it, you can do it. If this is something that really get you going, um, that you feel passionate about, come to us. Let us help you get to the place uh, where you can be successful and be, um, you won't be, you won't be starving. You'll be thriving. Uh, I guarantee it. So come see us, talk to us more. We'll help you get there. Oh my God. Thank you so much, Sue, for all of this. It has been an amazing live session. And thank you for, to all the students uh, that have joined us today. Thank you for sharing your time with us. We truly appreciate it. Um, <laughs> please get in touch with the Academy of Art University. Uh, uh, either way, they will get in touch with you after the, um, this session. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone sending emojis. I love them. <laughs> I do, too. Those are great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so right much. <laughs> and thank you so much, Sue. And thank you to Lucy, Trisha, and Hector, who are backstage, who helped us with all the questions throughout um, the session. Um, thank you, everyone. Obrigada. And see you next time. Carla, thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. You. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.